over on the left, we have Emma playing humans. And if you don't know the story behind this one, I think a lot of us have been in this scenario where you drive across state lines to play a magic tournament, and then you end up playing round one against your roommate who you drove to the tournament with. <laughs> uh, her opponent is Jake Humphreys. Yeah, we've seen these two play on teams together at various times throughout the tour and get to play against each other. Dredge versus humans, the, the two decks we were really highlighting talking there. Yeah, kind of the top two decks of the format. Jake's going to start off here on a turn one Shriekhorn. And we'll get things moving. Do you have a deck that you like in this matchup? Uh, the conversation has been that Humans is better against Dredge than a lot of decks in game one. And Emma has showed up with some Graveyard Hate in the sideboard. I'm going to err on the side of Humans here, though Jake having the play in game one here is a pretty significant factor. Yeah, both decks really doing what they want to on the first turn. Jake with a Shriekhorn, Emma with an Aether Vial. And Jake's Shriekhorn is going to do some work. It mills into Golgari Thug, so he can get the dredging started here on the second turn, and that dredging will put a Narc Amoeba onto the battlefield. Yeah, also mills over a Stinkweed Imp and Life from the Loam is kind of going off here. <laughs> Conflagrate for zero, and then a land to get back a Blood Ghast. Uh, casting the Conflagrate, that's obviously worse than Faithful Suiting to put it in the graveyard, but the presence of Conflagrate in the graveyard is massively impactful in this matchup. Right, and that's just showing some respect to it. He wants to make sure he has one of those in the yard as soon as next turn. Right, and you saw the second land there was just basic forest, so he wants to use this red mana now because it's probably going to be difficult for him to cast Conflagrate and flash it back on the same turn because the flashback is also double red. Yeah. Emma, Vials in, Champion of the Parish makes Thalia. Now, of note, both her lands here are Horizon Canopies, and that's actually... You know, Dredge is a damage-based deck. Yeah, well, the addition of Creeping Chill as well, the, that damage can really add up. You can kind of get chip-shotted out of the game now. Real quick, I'm going to check my Dredge 3 or 4, 3 or more that, box. That is a free space it's this kind weekend. kind of a free roll. <laughs> is it 3 or more or 4 more? It's it 3 or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we saw a thug, but... Yeah, Life from the Loam would have done it. Dredge other than deck more salvage is kind of what the square says. Now, Ryan... Jake milled once on the end step, but he actually, instead of dredging that Stinkweed Imp, he took a natural draw for the turn, and that's pretty unusual for dredge. Yeah, and it looks like the issue is he's stuck on lands, and the reason that he's not dredging life from the loam is he have to, has to deal with Thalia yeah. before he can cast life from the loam, and because he has red source basic forest, he can't flashback uh, conflagrate even if he had the one extra to pay for it. So he really just needs to find a land naturally here. If Emma's second creature was anything other than Thalia, this turn would have been pretty easy. He'd dredge loam, he'd cast it, get back some lands, make a land drop, and move on. But because it's specifically Thalia, this was a really weak turn for the dredge player. Yes. He, he will still get to kind of go with these streak horns. If he can get really fortunate on finding some creeping chills, he might still be able to salvage this, but he's in trouble. Oh my, and a huge turn from Emma. So I'm going to walk through it as this has gone pretty fast. Casts Champion of the Parish, use, using mana. Casts Thalia's Lieutenant, losing mana. Trigger on the stack, Vile's in Meddling Mage, so that that will get, so that that will see the Thalia's Lieutenant. Meddling Mage is going to name Conflagrate, and then th we're going to put a lot of dice on the creatures here. Oh yeah, they, these creatures get very large very quickly. The, the lieutenant double triggers the champion of the parish, you know, once for itself, once yep. for the champion. There's already a ton of damage coming out across the table here, and the meddling mage named Conflagrate, which would be the best thing that Humphreys had if he can naturally draw a red source of mana. Well, Shriekhorn himself, and you see this attack looks to be coming in for nine. He does hit one crippling chill. Emma's down to 11, and we should take note of this because Emma's done so much damage on these Horizon Canopies that Jake does have a, a sneaky out here. Yeah, if he just kind of hit all his Creeping Chills, then theoretically the Narcomedia could come across. He also pads his life total when he finds them. Though the bigger upset there was the first Shriekhorn milled over two red lands, and he really needed yeah. to draw that. And you see, he takes another natural draw, and he will pick up the cards. With Meddling Mage on Conflagrate, is there even anything he's drawing to at that point? At that point, he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, it might have been something that he was looking to hard cast a Stinkweed Imp just to get a blocker out there. Sure. And that gives him maybe one turn, based right. on the speed Emma's moving at. You could hope to dr mill over some Narc Amoebas as well, give him some more chump blockers, or even just a way to poke in on top of getting really lucky on the Creeping Chill front. So game one goes to Emma Handy and to humans. We'll take a look at some sideboard options. Uh, on Starting on Dredge's side, this is typically a deck 
that gets weaker after sideboarding, whether you're talking about legacy dredge or modern dredge. Right, and you see a lot of the sideboard here is kind of explicitly for the mirror. Uh, right. Or a counter sideboard strategy. So you go down there, he has four land out of the void. That's going to be mostly for the mirror. Not impactful here. Three Nature's Claim, three Lightning Axe, two Ancient Grudge, two Thought Seas, and an Assassin's Trophy. So the Thought Seas are going to be for more spell-based decks. That doesn't really come into play here. Yeah. The Lightning Axes are fine. Uh, some number of that makes a lot of sense. Um, meddling Mage can be a problem. You saw in that game, Thalia was a big problem. It's also just a nice discard outlet. That card's pretty reasonable. And then Jake's going to ask himself, how much of this stuff does he want to bring in knowing that Emma has sideboard Relic of Regenitus, or not Relic, um, Graph Digger's Cage. Graph Digger's Cage is the one, and she also has a Tormod's Crypt in the board as well. You kind of want to have some number of answers to that. The easy one is the Assassin's Trophy. That okay. can also hit creatures, no matter what the problem is, Trophy solves it. But there's a reasonable argument to reach for some of this other stuff, be it Nature's Claim or Ancient Grudge, some small number of copies of those, just because Graph Digger's Cage is often just lights out. Yeah, the card's super powerful in the matchup. So you may be forced to board in some amount of Nature's Claim. Mm -hmm. I know Dark Blast is a great card in the matchup. It's not in a sideboard. He does have one copy in the main, so he has that already yep. in. Yeah, that's a good one to have access to. It is notable that Humans is an Aether Vial deck, so your Artifact Destruction has a little bit extra mileage there. This isn't the matchup where Vial is the most impactful. Humans kind of just has to get on board quickly, so there's not that much time to leverage that. But destroying it can be worth something. All right, now on Emma Handy side, you did talk about those two Graph Diggers cages. I do want to look at the other things she has available. Three Knight of Autumn, two Oriok Champion, two Is It Staticaster, two Gaddock Teague, a Tormod's Crypt. That's not stock here, but, I mean, it's real respect for Dredge that we're starting to see that card in sideboards. Yes. Uh, a Sin Collector, a Whirler Rogue, and a Dismember. Yes, so that Tormod's Crypt, that third piece of Graveyard Hate to go with those Graph Diggers cages, that's going to be excellent. Is it Staticaster is really powerful in this matchup. Dredge is bringing Blood Gas, Dark Amoebas to the table. That cleans all that stuff up every turn. Just kind of a permanent solution to Blood Gas. There's a lot to like there. And then I don't mind Whirler Rogue in this matchup, actually. It just okay. creates a couple flyers there so you can deal with Dark Amoebas, what have you. Also just make some creature unblockable as the battlefield can get a little gummed up in this matchup. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the StarCityGames.com weekly sale, we've been given up to 50% off select promotional cards, and that's been going on all week. You still have time, though, to check out those deals. The sale goes all the way through the weekend. Head on over to StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. Starting to come around on those. You see that F&M promo opt, the all blue yeah. version. At first I was a little skeptical, but once I started seeing them actually in person, they look really nice. Stoneforge Mystic here. That was a GP promo, I believe. Yeah. A bit ago. Get ahead of that before people assume yeah. that it's going to be unbanned and buy a bunch of copies before the BNR update. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to talk about this Termod's Crypt in Emma's sideboard. Specifically, it's Tormod's Crypt instead of a more powerful graveyard sweeper like Relic of Progenitus. But I mean more powerful, I mean something that can gain you back the card advantage. A lot of times we're going to see decks go toward cards like Relic. Is it that is Dredge so good right now that we just don't have time to pay that mana? On the draw, it's really difficult to actually meaningfully use Relic of Progenitus. Um, it's the same problem that Rest in Peace has where sometimes the dredge player just does too much stuff on turn one into turn two. If they're just casting two Faithless Lootings or Faithless Looting Cathartic Reunion on their yeah. second turn, you've already lost the game. <laughs> like, your graveyard hate that's slower than that is not going to play, and that's why you see Graph Digger's Cage. That's why you see Tormod's Crypt. Got to be on the receiving end of that one I, with the uh, Team BCW Challenge yesterday. I've got right in the Charlotte area. It was at Scott's Collectibles. Yeah, got to face down a turn two Cathartic Reunion, and yeah, when they're on the play and hit that, it it doesn't matter if you're great. You know, I had a, I think I had a Bazooka Bog in my hand, and boy, did that be way too late on that. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> Reunion being both the discard outlet and the ability to just dredge immediately, the fact that you can find additional dredgers yeah. in the middle of the resolution because you replace every individual draw, you check dredgers on the graveyard, that card's just so explosively powerful for the deck. Yeah, they go from having nothing in play to then they tap two lands and suddenly they have 
12 cards in their graveyard and like 7 power in play. Yeah. So, ooh. Reasonable. Good return on the 2 mana investment. Some mulliganing happening here. Jake on 6 on the play. He's scrying to the bottom. Emma has kept on 5. She is contemplating her scry. Looks like it will be kept on top. Dredge is a deck that definitely has to mulligan a lot to find functional hands. And the difference between yeah. the functional and non-functional doesn't have very much to do with cards in hand. And then on Emma's side, playing humans or just any deck playing against Dredge, you kind of need to mulligan to graveyard hate. Faithless looting from Jake discards Narc Amoeba and Stinkweed Imp. The remains of his hand, it looks like he has another Narc Amoeba, a Lightning Axe, and a Cathartic Reunion, and a Second Land. This is a solid hand. The man is a little shaky. You never really want to lead on Gemstone Mine. Well, but he is dredging. How about this Emma with Termod's Crypt, though, for the turn? Jake dredges five, and now, still in his draw, we'll see whether Emma wants to Crypt. There was a Bloodgast, and it looks like that is enough to earn the Termod's Crypt. Emma will exile it all away. All, of note here, the one of Dark Blast in his main deck was hit on that Termod's Crypt. Yeah, that's a nice one to get out that'll keep your Thalias safe down the line. Maybe your, your noble, noble hierarchs. hierarchs. Yeah. <laughs> However, and there's some power of dredge. Here's Cathartic Reunion from Jake. Discard Stinkweed Imp and Narc Amoeba. First dredge is five. And that fifth card hits a second Stinkweed Imp. We are still going. And a blood gas and a creeping chill. Not even. And another one. Another Stinkweed Imp on the fifth card. Ugh. Mills over five more. I don't think. So th he's got all these Stinkweed Imps in hand. And one creeping chill hits. Graveyard has Bloodgast, Prized Amalgam, Life from the Loam, Faithless Looting, Conflagrate. So nothing this turn, but boy, are we set up for a decent next turn. Yes. Uh, depending what Emma has here, she really wants a Meddling Mage or a Thalia. Pretty easy script for Humphreys to follow is Dredge Life from the Loam, cast that, guarantee a land drop, get your Bloodgast yeah. back, start gassing up your hand for that Conflagrate. She needs another Termod script. Right. That's, that's, the that's, that's the other thing about Dredge. You need your graveyard Every hate turn. to come in early and often. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, until the game is over, that graveyard's going to keep filling itself. Now, when Jake casts the Light from Loam, he will lose this gemstone mine. How much of a concern is that? It's not a huge concern given that he's immediately just getting three land drops. So assuming that there's no Thalia, no Meddling Mage, and he can cast Life from the Loam on the following turn, that means even if he has to use the mine next turn, he'll still be ending that turn with two lands and have a third, fourth land drop rolled up. See what Emma has. Two land here. That Thalia or Meddling Mage mentioned both pretty good here. Not Thalia. It's just Thalia's lieutenant. She will attack in for two. That does not feel like it will be enough. Yeah, that's considerably weaker. What the plan here is for Emma is to just get some power on the battlefield. Maybe if she can leverage enough additional humans, more Thalia's attendants, she can get enough power where Humphrey's conflagrates a little bit overloaded. And as you mentioned, Jake dredges life from the loam, gets back. Gemstone mine, copper line gorge, wooded foothills. He actually thinks twice on the wooded foothills for basic mountain, and you know, this makes sense. You see in his graveyard, we have a basic mountain in his yard, one he got back, a stomping ground he he actually has hit a lot of his fetchable red sources yeah he only gets so many of them it's not too much value on having fetch lands either plays copperline gorge gets back two blood ghasts i believe we have a prized amalgam delay trigger in there too and we do pretty respectable position from here she has that conflagrate hanging out in graveyard yeah. good mix of cards in hand Another situation where, unless Handy is able to produce Meddling Mage naming Conflagrate, Humphreys has a pretty easy Plague Wind turn scripted for next turn. Champion of the Parish for Emma. Thalia's Lieutenant. That's her last card. The idea here is to grow these creatures out of Conflagrate range. Yeah, and this is the kind of sequence where she does have pretty substantial, substantial power now. Yeah, six. Yep, uh, so coming across for a good amount of damage, but also just has a ton of uh, toughness in the face of getting Conflagrated. You just say you're up to a 4-4 four, four creature in addition to another 3-3 three, three, and a 2-3 plus a 1-1 one, one hanging out. Humphreys doesn't have enough cards to deal with all of that. Kind of. We'll start with one. There's Lightning Axe plus Stinkweed Imp to take care of the largest creature. He will take two, go to 15. And I like the sequencing there. Jake waits until she attacks with both creatures so that Exalted won't have trigger. 
And previously, without that Lightning Axe, the Conflagrate could only do so much. And because he used Gemstone Mine, he's not yet set up to cast Life from the Loam and Conflagrate on the same turn. But because he cleared out the biggest threat, just using the Conflagrate to take care of the Champion and the Thalys Lieutenant is already a very good turn. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the floor for what he can do. Another Dredge 5 off Stinkweed Imp for Jake's turn. Hits one Creeping Chill and one Narc Amoeba. Emma's down to 14. Swing is for seven. That's half the life total. Seven remaining on Emma's side. Yeah, and there's not much that Emma can do about this attack. She can block or not. If she blocks, these creatures have a way of coming back onto the battlefield, and it just makes it easier to conflagrate them down. There's more damage going upstairs of the conflagrate if that's what Jace wants to do anyway. He will flashback Faithless Looting. First dredge is life from the loam. Second dredge is life from the loam. Just hits six cards. Nothing that has a lot of play here. And then he'll discard two Stinkweed Imps. Pass the turn. Put two more prized amalgams in the graveyard, but no way to get them back. Just yet. Yeah. Those blood gas are very likely to be making to a return to the graveyard as Emma doesn't really have good attacks anymore. She has to concern her, conserve her life total because she's at seven and she knows about that conflagrate. She wants to be attacking because she has to close the game. She'll cast Phantasmal Image on Thalia's Lieutenant. You're right, though. I mean, those two loams that Jake dredged back, she's got to be concerned just about him casting loams and conflagrating eventually here. Right. Really easy to get lethal just with that conflagrate. Add in the random creeping chill factor. Seven yeah. is not a high number. Those creeping chills. Those That was the card from Guilds of Ravnica that kind of powered dredge from that tier two deck straight into tier one. Right. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of Jeskai on the tour in previous months. So you, you could have made an yeah. argument that Dredge was a deck that was maybe a little bit underplayed before Creeping Chill, and that card definitely pushed it over the top. I we see here. It's just another free thing to mill over, draining your opponent for three. A lot of times it feels like you start the game at 29 and your opponent starts the game at 11, which just <laughs> isn't fair at all. Factor and they're in shock lands, what have you. And we see it there. Jake dredges five off Stinkweed Imp. He finds another Creeping Chill. Emma's at seven. That Conflagrate just becomes lethal. I think that was his third Creeping Chill of the game. So that 29 to 11 comparison, that's not even exaggerating. That's I, just what we did. I would accept those starting life totals. That That is a fine position to start from. And it makes cards just like, when you start the game at 11, one prized Amalgam hit doesn't feel feel trivial anymore. Right. This is also a format. Uh, we didn't really see this element play out in that game, but in game one, Emma led on a bunch of horizon canopies. When you're yeah. also damaging yourself with your mana, that makes your life total even lower. It's that much easier to close with the conflagrate. Exactly. It's... I feel like Dredge can... They can chip damage you out so much more easily now. Yes. And also, there's just kind of this unspoken synergy between Bloodgast and Creeping Chill. Where sometimes, you know, if you're, yeah. you have a lot of experience with the matchup, you think, all right, well, on this turn, I've stabilized at 13, 14, what have you. One or two Creeping Chills, suddenly the Bloodgasts have haste because you have 10 or less life. Yeah, step one, flip four Creeping Chills. <laughs> step two, your Bloodgasts have haste. Right. We're going to give my first card today, a bingo, a card having five or more counters. Emma has a Champion of the Parish that has hit that this game. It was game one. I'm going to take it anyway. <laughs> I have a Conflagrate for two or more damage, but we didn't actually see that one get cast. It's that one for zero. Right. That's less than two. And here's, I'm going to give you the, here's the bad thing. I have spell cast with Flashback, so I feel like... I'm going to get a square if you ever get that one. Yeah, my, my Conflagrate Square is in one of those really bad corner-adjacent spots as well. So I, I kind of don't care about it. Those are the worst, I think, just objectively the worst squares on the bingo board. Yes. Yeah, casual bingo players don't... They, they, they tend to celebrate square by square, but uh, we seasoned bingo veterans, we, we know which squares yeah. we're gunning for. Yeah, that those <laughs> the edge, the, the non-corner edge pieces. We're just we're a little <laughs> off those ones. Yeah, those, those Sunday church bingo players. They're gonna celebrate non-corner <laughs> edge, but 
you know, we, we know the true value. One square is not one square. At least the middle edge lines up with the free space. Yes. Right? So it's got that. The not, right. The, the second and fourth column edge pieces. Those were off those ones. It's an amateur square. I assume that your flashback is in a better position. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Exactly so the it same. It's just the same. All right. It's a wash. May as well just both check it. Soon. <laughs> I think we're going to get that today. Someone will there's flash a, back a conflict There's a rate. reasonable chance. Unless I've really misread the metagame. Right. Yeah, this, this is something that was actually really surprising. The paper modern metagame generally moves very slowly, with the exception of when the format is just totally broken. An example yeah. of that, after the Eldrazi Pro Tour, <laughs> yeah. the next week the field is already just all Eldrazi. People got that one pretty quick. But last weekend I was really surprised at how quickly how many players had picked up Creeping Chill Dredge. We even saw Caleb Shearer, the Storm Master, the Storm yeah. Counter himself, a player who I didn't even think owned non-blue-red modern cards playing the dredge deck. I'm handy on six here for game number three. I absolutely agree. And from what I've heard, it's not just paper. Magic Online apparently has already gotten to a point. A lot of times Magic Online is a couple weeks ahead of, of paper magic. Not only was dredge good, we're almost at the point where dredge is bad on Magic Online. Right. Yeah, once it becomes good and very present, you start stocking up your graveyard with a bunch of ley lines, what have you, and Dredge can be hated out. That much is true. Captain of Souls on human for Emma makes Noble Hierarch. Jake's turn one plays a Shriekhorn. Both decks kind of more or less sticking to the script so far. We'll see if uh, Emma can produce some Graveyard Hage. She'd really love to have a Graph Digger's Cage here. Yeah, Shriekhorn's actually a change with the Creeping Chill versions. Previously, you would see decks play Insolent Neonate in this spot, but because of Creeping Chill, it looks like they just want more raw mill. Right. There's just a lot more incentive to put cards directly from your library into your graveyard. And the Shriekhorn is just more looks. Unless you already have the Dredger in your hand, the Neonate's not doing very much. The Shriekhorn is just kind of a one card that can let you keep a hand. Mantis Rider from Emma attacks for four. We will see Narc Amoeba off this Shriekhorn if Jake wants to block, but he does not. Also mills life from the loam. Upkeep, he'll see if he can do better. He cannot surprise Amalgam. He will dredge that life from the loam, and no creature just yet for the Amalgam. There is a conflagrate, though. And it looks like he has a second land. We might see him just go for a Plague Wind here. So he'd pitch almost his whole hand, and he just deal three and one? Yes. Sure, um, I'm in. Kind of depends how much you care about the Mantis Rider. We saw him already saying, all right, I'm not going to chump block with my Narc Amoeba. Depending what's he able, what he's able to discard, if he already had like a Blood Ghast in hand, um, a Stinkweed Dip, what have you. Other thing that you know, saw him dredge life from the loam there, he could just cast that, get that back in the graveyard, and set him up with another dredger. You know, that goes in the graveyard either way. You can either cast the life from the loam or discard it to the Conflagrate. He is really thinking about it. I think we have six cards in hand, so he'd even get to keep a couple of them. There's some creatures that you kind of want to save the Conflagrate for, something like Thalia, Guardian of the Thraben, next turn. Okay. But you can't save it for Meddling Mage, because Meddling Mage just shows up, names Conflagrate. And then, and then you're good. Yeah. So this might not be the most enticing battlefield to go for the Conflagrate, but there's always that question mark on whether or not you'll actually be able to do it next turn when you play against a Meddling Mage deck. He is already down to 12, and that looks like this earns the Conflagrate. So he discards Life from the Loam, Prized Amalgam, Prized Amalgam, and, creep and Creeping Chill. Takes care of both creatures. When you have two Amalgams, it does change the math a bit here. You'd really like to get them all in the graveyard. It right. sweeps up the board. And he gets that dredger in the graveyard. So it looks like Life from the Loam was the best option. But finding a Narc right. or a Blood Gas on the following turn would dramatically change his presence on the battlefield. Yeah, there's no Stinkweed Imp yet. So he's just dredging three. Still is really hoping to find a way to trigger now what looks to be three prized amalgams in the graveyard. Right. And he does have that last counter on the Shriek Horn as well. So he will have five looks at it. All right. See if Emma can rebuild. Just 
three cards remain. She was on a mulligan to six on the play here, so it was on fewer resources. And we have not seen any graveyard hate yet to speak of as well. So fewer resources. She's already been taken down by a plague wind. You know, the creatures that she's cast so far, they're dead. And we have not seen graveyard hate, which is pretty important in this matchup. Thalia, the play from Emma. And she'll pass. Upkeep Jake Mills, two. Creeping Chill is one of them. 15 and 16. Life tells just kind of equal out for nothing. And Creeping Chill is pretty new to the format. Some people watching might think, doesn't Jake have to pay one for that through the Thalia? No. Creeping Chill no. just triggers, exiles itself, and you just get to get that effect. And now Jake's back to taking that natural draw because the Thalia, his hand is life from the loam. And I believe he's got an, another two mana spell and, and cathartic reunion. And he drew Stinkweed Imp for the turn. Here's an awkward element as well. He has Dark Blast and Graveyard, but no black, no black mana. mana. So he needs a natural draw for a land and also just a black mana. So for the foreseeable future, he'll be taking these natural draws. We'll see what hand he can produce it's to the battlefield as well. Oriac Champion from Emma. I'm interested about these natural draws. Is that better than just trying to dredge and get these amalgams into play and just go beating up with them? Well, the issue is... When he could cast Life from the Loam, he was looking for Narcomoeba and Bloodgast. When you don't have the land, it has to be Narcomoeba. So there's three of them. It's not great, is it? Right. Your odds are much higher of finding just any land. Well, it might be close when you're looking at three cards, but it's still not good. And if you miss, you're just doing nothing. Whereas if you find the land, you don't just turn on the Amalgams immediately this turn. You actually just turn your deck back on. Well, Thala's Lieutenant from Emma is going to deal some damage here. Swinging in for five, knocks Jake down to eight. He needs the land. Can he find it? No, he cannot. Passes back. And running out of looks at it, he drew Narc Amoeba. Ugh. Uh, so that we feels supposed bad. To, we were supposed <laughs> to dredge on that one. Right. Uh, <laughs> I guess when he's drawing cards naturally, a Faithless Looting is actually also a good draw here. Right, yeah, you can actually cast the front side of one of those. Reflector Mage, and is this going to be lethal? Swings in. It's, it's one shy. One shy, yeah, we're at s for it, seven. It, it really may as well be, though. With Humphreys just naturally drawing, you can only get these tapped amalgams back, what have you. Not much you can do, and yep, yeah, we're going to pack it in. Emma Handy, 2-1 over Jake Humphreys.